Hi, extending classes and method chaining. So class extensions and method chaining are two techniques that when combined are very powerful and they create an API-like experience and they're very easy to see, it, very easy to write and very easy to, to read. So when you read the code, it's easier to read uh, something that has been method chained and properly formatted than just reading the same variable again and again and trying to figure out what is happening. So let's jump right in and I'm gonna show you a simple example. I'm gonna say an, an animal class and we're gonna create a dog and a cat. And I'm gonna show you how you can use extension methods and method chaining to make your code easier to read and nicer, in my opinion. So let's create an, a class animal. And let's say this animal has a name and a health. So public string name and public int health, right? And let's say this animal can do several things. So let's say public void do sleep, for example. Uh, I would like it to also eat and play. Do work? No, no, no. Shouldn't work. Should play. All right. So it can sleep, eat, and play. Actually, I'm gonna I'm gonna say sleep, eat, and play without do for now. All right. So now I'd like to have a cat that can meow and a dog that can bark. All right. So these are my simple, simple classes. Actually, I'm gonna move this like so, so it's easier to work with. Yeah. What's the zoom level? Let's go like this. Yeah, you should be able to, to see it. All right and the cat will meow and the dog will bark all right and let's say somewhere in your code you have a uh, some class so public class i'm doing everything here so we don't change files of course you can create different classes and so on some class all right and we here we're gonna have some method and i want to create a new cat i'm gonna call it tom and give it a health. And what am I missing here? Yeah, the namespace. All right. And I'm also gonna create a new dog. And I'm call it, I'm gonna call it Spike. And again, it's gonna have a health. All right, so this looks nice, but let's say I want the cat to, after I created it, I want it to uh, go to sleep. And the dog, I would like him to play. And of course, after that, I want it to bark. And the cat should meow. All right. So you see that we're repeating the, the variable name. So cat.name, cat.hut, cat.sleep, cat.meow, and the same for the dog. In order to create method chaining, the, the method should return the class that uh, it's, it's in. So let's say I want to say cat. I'd like the cat to say cat.sleep.play. All right, so I want the cat to be able to do that. And so this is, this is called method chaining, basically. So dot sleep dot play. This doesn't work because sleep returns nothing. It's a void. So one way of addressing this is say uh, cat, actually animal sleep, and I'm gonna return this, All right? And I'm gonna do the same for eat and play. All right? And now this works. So basically I can do that. The only problem is if I want to say meow, this won't work. Let's say I'm going to do the same thing here. So cat and I'll say 
uh, return this and for the dog i'm going to say return this all right so the problem here is that i can say cat meow and after that sleep and play but i cannot call meow after uh, i cannot do this this won't work but this will work because sleep and play return the base class animal while meow returns a cat class that is derived from animal so a way of fixing this or making this work is actually let's also yeah um is creating some uh, extensions for the animal class some special extensions so i'm gonna say um, we need to create a static class so public static class animal extensions it already knows what i want so no t i'm gonna sleep t. yeah this is way better and i'm gonna make these virtual void i'm gonna make them all right so i can have different sleep cycles and i'll say do sleep do eat and do play i'm renaming them because i do not want to use the, these methods these methods for chaining I want to use the, the simple ones. So I'm going to say animal, do sleep. All right. And return the animal that is type of, it, it, it return the class. All right. So I'm going to do the same thing for the other ones. So for eat and for play. All right. So now, just because I did that, I can do this. Now it works. So basically, I can call uh, sleep meow play, or maybe meow sleep play, something like that. And let's also do the same thing for name and health. Let's say I want to set the name. So public static t set name. And I'm going to do the same thing for the health, right? So instead of writing this, I'm gonna say cat. I'm gonna say cat equals new cat set name Tom set health 100 and then meow sleep and play. And this is easier var. All right. So this is my cat. And of course, I can do the same thing for the dog. So I'm going to say new dog. I'll say set name, spike, set health, 100. And of course, bark, sleep, and play. And this is a bit easier to, to work with and to visualize. The power of this approach is that you can add a lot of things to it and it will work for any derived class for example let's say i want to add a way to heal the health to, so to increase the health or to take damage how would i do that it's very easy i'm gonna work only with extensions so oh why did i make these classes virtual well let's say when the cat sleeps it heals 10 health points all right so I'm going to say cat um, sleep and I'm going to say not sleeping health plus equals 10. So when the class, uh, the, the, the cat sleeps, let's also call the base. Do sleep. All right. So when the, when the cat sleeps, it heals 10 uh, hit points. And let's do the same thing for uh, the dog. When it heals, it heals, let's say, 15 points or, or 20. It doesn't matter. So basically, you can add different things with uh, these virtual methods. But let's say I want to I wanna add a heal options for both the cat and the dog, for all the animals. So public 
static T heal, right? And no healthy Jesus heal. This T animal int amount. Now I have a heal method. So I can say uh, heal 10. And here I can say heal 20. There you go. So basically I'm adding that amount to the health. All right. Um, all right. Let's say I want to take damage, right? So how would I do that? It's really, or hurt. Yeah. Actually take damage. All right, so now we can also add take damage 20 and take damage 100, right? So let's say you want to add some new uh, stats to your animal. You don't know how, how this will grow. So just relying on, uh, on the constructor and then you also have to change different things. It's really not reliable. So let's say I want to have uh, speed. I want to have, uh, let's say, power um, and intelligence, for example. So I just added several stats. How can I address them? So here I'm going to say, uh, where is it? So set health. And here I say set speed, set power, set intelligence. And this is done for all the other classes. So basically it's an extension method that works um, in a method chaining like behavior. I don't know. So yeah, now I can add intelligence or set health, set power, set speed. There you go. So I can already add different things and you can do this everywhere. We use it extensively in all the systems inside the UI manager and understanding how they work and why they work. It really doesn't matter how you call it. You just know that each method does something. So let's say set power, it will increase the animal's power. So in this case, uh, the cat's power, and then it's gonna come back and set the speed. So yeah, the, the execution order is important. For example, maybe you wanna connect to, to something and say server dot set address, set destination dot connect. So basically you can do some setup and then uh, run things. All right, so that's pretty much it for um, this quick uh, video about extensions, uh, uh, class extensions and meta chaining. It's really uh, easy to use if you understand it. And it is very powerful because it's easier, it's less, less clutter in your code. It's easier to read yeah, and to write. All right, that's pretty much it. Thank you very much, and I'm going to see you in the next video.